Welcome back guys, it's craft time. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for being back with me today. If you are new, welcome, I'm Candice from Crafting with Candice. I have a really fun video today. I had a lovely friend of mine reach out and ask if I wanted um, some of her old wine corks for anything. And I said, sure, I'm sure I can find something to do with them. So I'm gonna walk you through this beautiful tray that I made, how I did it, and show you the final results. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to start this project, I kind of had a vision of what I wanted, but I wasn't sure how to get there. Originally for the tray, I was going to build it myself. However, I knew that I wanted to coat the corks that I was going to place down in the bottom with epoxy. And if you've ever messed with epoxy, if there's a way out, it will find it. And I was really scared that if I didn't line things up right properly or get it nice and flat and level, then I was gonna have a huge mess on my hands and just create way more work for myself than I really needed to. That and I was probably going to recruit some help. This way I didn't have to worry about it and I could just handle it on my own. When I was finding some other materials for another project, I found this little tray. It's a 13 by 13 inch tray. It's perfect size for what I was wanting. It's beautiful, it's just a natural tray so I can stain it whatever color I want, which I knew to kind of offset with the corks, I wanted a really dark brown stain. So fun, so that's what I went ahead and did. I stained the tray, which if you've never stained before, you just paint or wipe it on. Um, you let it sit, the longer you let it sit, the darker the stain will get, and then you want to make sure that you wipe all of the stain off of it to give it a nice clean, finish that way you don't have any extra residue um, I did not seal this in the correct order I should have sealed it right after I finished staining it but I was so excited to get started with the other part of the project that I had to do that at a little later stage which I'll show you in a little while okay so the next thing I need to do is seal it I need to make sure that all of the cracks and crevices are completely locked off that way when I put my resin on top of my corks it's not going to find cracks in this little tray and go seeping through it would just be a mess and it's just something that's very very important so I just caulked around all of the edges and then I measured one of the thickest corks that I knew I would use to see how tall that was and I put the um caulk right up to the top of that so the caulk is white which is kind of an issue because if you, there are any spaces or spots you're going to see it. So I just went ahead and grabbed this brown paint, like acrylic paint that I had on hand. It doesn't match my stain at all, but the whole point was to hide the white so it's not as stark bright. That way, if there is any little spots showing through, you're really not going to notice it too much. So that's what I did. Caulked all of the creases, caulked up um, the corners just a little bit, probably, I don't know, like half an inch to an inch um, tall to make sure that however far up the epoxy goes it's not going to leak through there um, painted over the caulk to kind of mask the white and how bright it is and then it was time to cut the handles and lay out all of the corks so for the handles I have this really fun nautical rope um, all I did is buy some of that I knew like I said from my vision kind of how big I wanted them to be so I um, just cut them down to where I needed to be. I marked down in the bottom of the tray where I wanted them to sit and then made sure my measurements on the opposite side all were the same so that they matched and were really lined up and not crooked or offset. And then I hot glued them down. So I not only hot glued them from the bottom, so like where I cut the rope, I hot glued the part that would be sticking to the tray. I also hot glued it to the side where it's touching the side of the tray just to give it a little more oomph and hold until the epoxy gets into place. So once the epoxy goes in, those things are not moving anywhere, but until that happened, I didn't want them to move around or um, get unsituated to where they were kind of offset. So yeah, um, a little trick that I used to whenever I cut the rope, you know, it, it, it's twisted. So I didn't want it to unravel. I just took some twine that I had. You can use twine or wire or string, whatever you have laying around. And I just tied the end of it. Um, I used matching twine because I had it or, or whatever it's called. I don't know. I call it twine 
whatever you call it. <laughs> and I just tied it around the bottom to keep those from unraveling until it was glued down. Um, if you're going to be doing a project where you can see the end, you'll probably want it to match. So just keep that in mind. I had these corks that were donated to me. They're two bags full. So fun. And I have no idea what to expect because obviously I'm not the one that drank the wine. So I don't know what brands and different like designs and things we have. I just knew that I wanted it to be fun and different. I didn't want to have all of the same corks lined up. And I wanted there to be some variety in sizes and colors, um, which only can do so much about the color because they all <laughs> kind of look the same. But that's what I did. I just kind of went through and before I started laying them out, I looked at the different designs and sizes and stuff and I would lay out each individual roll of corks before I would glue them down, which when I say I glued them down, I hot glued every single one of the corks into place. That way, whenever I would pour the epoxy in, they weren't just going to float up to the top um, because they're very airy and that would be a problem. Actually, there was one of them that did. I thought I glued it in and it, I didn't, but luckily it was off in the corner and I was able to just push it down <laughs> a couple times. But yeah, so I just planned out, okay, this roll, this is what it's going to look like. This is where, what design I want to show. And I didn't want all the words facing the same direction. And maybe I put a little more thought into it than I should. But like I said, I had a very distinct direction I wanted to go with this. So I, one row at a time. And then um, none of them fit like exact every time. So sometimes I'd have to cut part of the cork off and then do it. So when I was doing that, I was trying to make sure I wouldn't have like four rows like in a row that had the cork cut off on the same side so i would if i cut it off on say the right side of this row i would put a full cork there and then cut it off on the left side that way it, they weren't all lining up together and they were kind of staggered um so yeah that's what i was doing i was trying to like i said if there was like a heavy image on this one i tried to make sure that there wasn't a heavy image right next to it um and all of these different things. I just wanted it to kind of balance, but also seem natural. So one line at a time, I would take, line it up, take a cork out, hot glue it, put it back into place, go to the next one. And it did take quite a bit of time, but I think it turned out beautiful. Um, and then after that, I was ready for epoxy. Now, corks are full of air. I just said that, right? And epoxy, <laughs> you don't want bubbles. Can you see where I'm getting at? I knew this was going to be a problem going into it. I considered sealing the corks, like doing some kind of clear coat over them or something to help lock them so that the epoxy couldn't really seep into them and let all of that air out. One, I was kind of lazy because that would have added a lot of time to the entire project, but two, I hadn't laid anything out yet, so I didn't really know which corks I wanted to use, which side, you know, I didn't have all of that planned through. So I would have had to do all of that, figured out all of the corks I want to use, and then seal them so that they would have time to dry so that I could actually glue them down. And that sounded horrible. So instead, I had planned on having a good, you know, like 40 minutes to an hour after I poured the epoxy to where I could just babysit it. So I just watched some TV and hung out. So I did, I think, four layers of epoxy. So I don't have deep pour epoxy. Um, so I needed to be careful that I didn't pour it too deep to where it wasn't gonna set properly. And you would just find this out by reading your bottle. So I did the first layer, which I ended up doing two pours on that um, at the same time because of just how the corks are laid out and all of the crevices and stuff. I didn't feel like I really coated it the way that I needed to. So I just poured my epoxy all over it, which it didn't quite cover the tops of it, which was fine because it was helping get all of those initial bubbles out. Um, so when I did that, I just kept coming back with my torch probably every 10 to 15 minutes um, to try to help keep those bubbles and get them out so that they wouldn't ruin my final finish, which there are still some bubbles in there, but they don't look too bad and it's not... It's not horrible. And I do want to say, if you're going to do this, you have to be very careful with this because when you're adding that extra heat, you're heating up your resin even more. And when resin heats, that's when it starts to set. So you don't want to get any kind of, you'll start getting like this really weird film buildup on the top of your resin if that part's starting to set because you've hit it with the um, 
torch too much, which did start happening to me, but I, I knew to look for that so that I stopped immediately and I just kind of let it go. So I, I basically just kept coming back um, until I knew that my resin was thick enough that any bubbles that were left in it were probably going to be stuck and not be able to push through to come up to the top. Like I said, I did have some happen, but it really wasn't that bad. So then I continued on with my next few layers. So I gave the first layer, I think, two days to um, set, which I know that with the stuff that I use, which is the Dr. Crafty, which I have affiliate links all the way down in the bottom of my description if you're interested in um, seeing the resin that I use. Excuse me. But when I use it for other projects, I know that within... Um, Close to like 18 to 20 hours, I can remove up one of my products from its mold if I'm doing like a silicone mold or something like that because it's set to that point. So I knew that I would be safe going ahead and pouring over at that time um, and that it would be strong enough to hold the next layer. But I went ahead and gave it two days because I wanted to sand that top portion. That way the epoxy, the next layer would have something to grip onto, but also to try to sand a little bit of the bubbles out that kind of bubbled up, which ended up working great. Um, and then to clean off the um, particles from the sanding, I wiped it down with alcohol. And if you use alcohol on your resin piece before it has set properly, it's going to uh, just kind of like mess it up and get goopy and it may not ever like resolve itself. So I just wanted to warn you guys about that. Give yourself, yourself plenty of time to set fully, get nice and hard and cure. That way you can go ahead and sand it without having any issues. And then you can also properly wipe it down with alcohol because you want the alcohol to get all of that dirt and stuff off and then it will evaporate and not leave any streaks or anything weird behind. But if it's not fully set, you'll get yourself into some trouble. So then I did my next um, couple layers. I did the same thing. I I poured it. I watched whenever I was pouring, whenever I would mix it up, I was letting it sit for probably 10 minutes till all of the bubbles that I mixed in rise to the top and get as many of them out as possible. And then I would pour the layer, come back, hit my bubbles, let it fully cure. I did that again. So I let it sit for another two days, sanded it <laughs> and just kept repeating until I felt like I had a good amount and layer over top of the corks to where it has a nice glassy finish. It's all nice and even. You don't have to use epoxy on this. I did it because the corks aren't all the same size. They don't all sit the same way. And I wanted this tray to be something that people can sit their belongings on top of and it not just topple over. And it actually looked really good. So that's pretty much the steps that I took for this project. Um, in between layers when they, one of them was curing, I did go ahead and seal um, the outside of the tray with my polyurethane top coat, which is also in my affiliate links if you are interested in seeing that. And doing that just kind of sets the stain in place so it doesn't like have any kind of like weird oily feel. It also helps keep it um, protect it from a little bit of moisture. It also helps make it a little bit scratch resistant. It's just, you don't have to do it, but it's a step that I believe um, would probably be needed for something like this, especially if it's sitting out and being moved around and banged up. So I'm going to go ahead and show you. I am in love with how this turned out. In love with it. I couldn't have pictured something in my head and made it come to life more than what this did. So this is it. Um, as you can see, it's just a little tray that I stained. Here it is. Um, these are the handles that are just, like I said, they're epoxied in. They're not going anywhere. All of the different corks, they're so beautiful. My light might make this a little bit difficult. But you can see, I wanted them all to go the same direction. Um, I didn't want to stagger them at all. I just really liked the clear flow that they had to them. And then I'm gonna kind of bring you in close and see if you can see any of the bubbles because they're, it's really not that bad or as bad as I thought it would be. Um, but right there in the middle, there's a few small ones. I don't know if you can even tell. There's a few small ones in between the corks. Um, there's a one really big one right here in the middle by the like little fruit, if you can see it. I can't reach that far and hold it. Um, and sorry about my fingernails. I have paint all over me. I have been 
crafting my booty off. So yeah, this is the tray. I think it turned out gorgeous. I'm very, very happy with it. It was very fun to do. It took a very long time because working with the resin, you have, like I said, you have to have that cure time. So it took me probably a week to finish um, from start to finish of having the tray, staining, doing all of the steps, um, and then to the final pour and coat. And then obviously from there, I had to let it cure for the rest of the time. I think it was worth it. I think it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. I would love to know what you guys think. Leave me a comment down below. Um, if it's a project that you would love to try yourself or if you just really enjoyed it as well. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for heading on back over here to see me. Um, consider hitting the thumbs up button. I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet to see what I have going on and coming up next. I'm going to take you guys in for a closer look and I'll see you next time.